this is week five of our series that we're titling Training Day. Somebody say Training Day. Training day. Anybody, anybody when, uh, when they were little, you know, when you're riding that bicycle, you're ready to take off those training wheels? You know what I'm talking about? When you're riding those training wheels, you're just ready to take it off? I mean, even though you were a little scared at first, you know, you, uh, your mom or your dad was behind you and they were holding you, but you, you were ready, right? You are ready, yes? Yes? So, so I want you guys to be ready to take those training wheels off. All right? I want you guys to be ready to, it's time to take those training wheels off. It's time to start eating solid food because I'm going to be serving you guys some steak today. I hope you guys want some filet mignon. You guys have your, your knife and your, your steak knife out, all that stuff because we're going to eat good today. I'm really excited, man, about God's word today. And we've been in this series um, just kind of all about working out, right? And, and we've been talking about working out our mind and, and making up our mind and, and uh, running and all these things pertaining to working out and training for transformation. Like it says in Romans chapter 12, right? Um, how does it start? Do not conform. Is that how it starts? That's not how it starts, is it? No, it's not. Ro- Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Come on, somebody. It's not, it doesn't start with do not conform, right? It's Thank you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself. So what? Janice, so what? You present yourself to the living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable to him, which is your reasonable service. And then verse 2, and do not conform to the things of this world, but be what? Say it again. Be what? Transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may prove that good and acceptable, perfect will of who? God, God, perfect will of God, amen. So, so we've been talking about training for transformation and what that looks like in our lives and how important it is that even Paul says, you know, exercise profits a little bit. Like exercise is good. Physical exercise profits a little bit, right? We're, we're exercising. I can go here. I can lift some weights and, and I've been getting bigger. I've been, now that the gyms are open, everybody's going back to the gyms again and I'm excited and I've been going back in. I've been actually, I've been feeling good. I've been feeling a little better. I'm like, yeah, I, got, I get that pump again. I didn't, I didn't get quite that pump that I wanted in my garage, but now I'm back in the gym. I'm, like, I'm getting that pump. I'm like, yeah, this is good. And so I'm excited. So Paul says physical exercise profits a little, but godliness Profit so much more. So if we can relate training in the gym to training our spiritual walks with Christ, that's so much more important. We can look good on the outside, but if our spiritual walks on the inside is what's suffering, then what is it for? Right? What is it for? What, what, is, what is lifting all these weights for? Nothing. I can look as good as I want on the outside, but if I look like a skinny, scrawny little guy on the inside spiritually then I'm not doing it. I'm not doing what I, what I need to be doing. And that's the title of my message today. I am weak. Somebody say, I am weak. You know that feeling when you work out? That feeling like after you got a good workout in? How do you feel? <laughs> Tired. Somebody said accomplished, but what, who, somebody else said over here too, I think. Pain? You sore? So by definition, I mean, you feel weak, Right? I mean, you like run a you run a marathon or whatever, and like the next day you're just like ah 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 ah, right? I mean, that's, that's like when I went back to the gym, I did hamstrings like like lying down prone. That's what they call it, like prone. If you're lying down and you're doing these, like oh yeah, ah oh, yeah, that's what their hamstrings. It's a good workout. So I did that, and I hadn't done that at home. And the next day, like this side especially, I don't know why, but I was walking around, I was like ah ah, like I was. I was like sore. I was in pain. It was hurting. I was like, man, I must have worked that out good because it was hurting. But that's, what, that's the feeling that I'm talking about. Like when you work out, you're just like, man. Or even when you don't work out, if you're just like, uh, 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 like, like, like my brother Daniel over here, he massages. He massages like nobody's business. Right? I'm, gi- I'm giving him free business right now. So if you need a massage, talk to Daniel Castillo right there. He's raising his hand. <laughs> He's right there. But, but, but. But go to him. He's amazing. But he works so hard. He massage, man. He gets in there. But at the end of the day, he has to ice every single night because he's just sore. He's in pain. He's hurting because he's been working so hard. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That feeling where you're just, you feel weak, right? She's like, man, I'm, I'm like, I thought working out was supposed to make me feel good. Why do I feel, why do I feel bad? I feel horrible. You just, you get this fatigue. Uh, this feeling of fatigue. And if you're not feeling fatigued when you're working out, then maybe you're doing it wrong. 
And you know those people in the gym, they're just, they go to the gym and they're just like, yeah, you know, working out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're just like on the bench. They're doing all these things. And they, they, they like walk out. They're like, yeah, man, see you later. And then like you see them like they're just, they're just not even sore. Nothing. Like they're not even sweating. Like did you even work out? Like did you put in the energy at all to actually feel fatigue? Because that's a part of it. That's that's majority of it. If you're not feeling fatigued, then you must be doing something wrong. And if you're doing something wrong, then you need to talk to your trainer. And who's your trainer? Yeah, Jesus. But yeah, I mean, I'm your trainer. <laughs> of course, Jesus. Of course, Jesus is all our trainers, right? But this is why I'm here, too. <laughs> I don't need you, Rich. I need Jesus. Look, look. Those are the people that say, I don't need church. I just got Jesus. <laughs> then why am I here? <laughs> this is why I'm here to help train you guys, to train for transformation. Somebody say transformation. transformation. And it's that, that feeling of fatigue. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It's supposed to be a good feeling, but it doesn't feel good. But that, but that weakness you feel after you work out, believe it or not, is a good thing. So, so during exercise, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of knowledge. This is what happens. Maybe you know this already, and if you do, kudos to you. If not, during exercise, this is what happens. When you're lifting weights, you stress your muscles. Okay, You stress your muscles, and the fibers begin to break down. As the fibers repair themselves, they become larger and stronger than they were before. This is what you're doing. You're literally tearing your muscles when you're working out. You're literally putting so much stress and strain on your muscles in order to get stronger. That's what you do when you work out. That's what you do when you lift weights. So Paul said this. I'm going to read the NLT version before I read the New King James Version. Can I read the New Living Translation? Is that okay? He says, he says this. Each time he said... My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses, in the insults, in the hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Somebody say, I am weak. weak. What is Paul Sane here. So basically what happens, if you go to, if you go to the, you read the full chapter of, of, of 12 here, uh, uh, Paul is talking about how he has this vision and all this. We're not going to go too much into it. He saw the third heaven, all this stuff. This isn't, this isn't that time for that. But what he's saying is he asks God three times to remove this, this thorn in his side, this, this thing that was ailing him, that, that was causing him to so much pain and suffering. He has got to remove it three times. And what does God say? No. <laughs> no. And this reminds me of me. I mean, for, for, for years, I was struggling with, and, and thank God it, it hasn't come back yet, but I was struggling with this thing inside my stomach. And I was like, Lord, take this away, please. I mean, I mean, it started when me and Jess shortly got married, and so much so, I mean, my dad was like, are you sure your wife's not poisoning you? <laughs> not joking. <laughs> True story. <laughs> but he's like, he's like, kid, I, I, love, I love Jess, but you sure she's not poisoning you? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, she's not, she's not poisoning me. <laughs> but, but it just wouldn't go away. And, then, and so they were like, oh, well, it has to be has to be your appendix. We don't see anything in your appendix. Long story short, take appendix out. I said, okay, well, now it's your gallbladder. Long story short, take your gallbladder out. So, so I'm playing a game with the doctors. See how many organs they can take out before I'm, die- I'm dead. But, but, but I've just been struggling through this thing inside for so long. And then I was like, Lord, take it away. 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 He said, no, 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 no. And it just, sometimes we have these things in our lives Listen, sometimes we have these things in our life that are so close to us that cause us so much pain and suffering, and as much as we ask God to remove it, he says no. Why? Doesn't God want you to to be healed? Doesn't God want you to to, to move on and all these things? He He says no. Well, maybe it's for a reason. And it's not with everything, but with certain things, okay, with certain things. And Paul's saying here that, that, that I could boast in all of these good things and all these great visions God has given me, but I choose to boast in 
in my pain. I choose to boast in, in the battle within me. It's like, man, what, what is going on here? And those times that I'm talking about are those times where you feel, you feel drained, you feel weak. A specific time, you guys, uh, you know, when, when, when you hurt yourself, okay, and like my wife does this all the time. I do this all the time too. Everybody does this. Like you just, like you're in pain. Like you just hurt yourself. You stubbed your toe or whatever, and somebody goes up to you and says, "What do they say? Hey, are you, are you, are you okay? What, what do you need?" And you're just like, Shh. and they'll, they'll talk this. Right? And it's like, and like you get so upset. We get so upset. We're just like, leave me alone. Like, are you okay? Does it look like I'm okay? I'm not okay. <laughs> look at me. I'm in pain. What do you think, honey? Yes, I need a doctor. I'm bleeding all over the place. Like, like that, that's what I'm talking about. Those, those moments where we're just like, like, <laughs> like we want the help, but then we don't want the help. Do you know what I mean? You're like, like, hey, hey, help me. And, and, there's, and then they come in, they're going to help. Let me help you. No, leave me alone. No, don't help me like that. Just like, help me. Help, help me another way. <laughs> and, and I think of the times that we're just like, like, Lord, 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 help me. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me with this situation. Help me with this thing I'm going through. And then maybe he brings the help, but not in the way that we expect. And then we reject it because that's not really what we wanted in the first place. It's just not how... We wanted it. It didn't fit our own expectations or our own vision and plan for how we wanted to be healed. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm just talking about, I'm talking about times where we're weak, where we're weak, we're weak. We're weak. Somebody say, I'm weak. So I'm going to give you another example here. Okay, I'm going to give you another example. So, so when, when in these times where we feel so weak, okay, and somebody's actually trying to come to help us. We push them away because we don't want help. This is the place the enemy uses to push you away from what you need. In that moment, in that moment, when you ask for help, but you don't really want the help, but then the help comes, and then, and then you're just like, get away from me, I don't want it. Or Lord, no, I don't want it that way. That, that's what the enemy is using to get you away or push you away from what you really need. That's the moment and your opportunity in time to either accept that help or reject the help when you most need it. So when you get that thought of, no, 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 I'm, I, I'm in pain. I don't need that. I don't want that. Does this make sense? I don't, I don't, I don't want that. And, the, and that's the enemy or your flesh rejecting, I guess, in essence, God the help that he's sending you, okay? So, so let, me show, let me show you this real quick. Can I, can I, can I show you something real quick? Jo Jovan, do you want to come help me real quick? Come here, come here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys something. So, so pretending to working out, go, go get him back. You're going to spot me, okay? Just, just make sure I know, I, know, I know where I'm at and I'm good and, and we're good. Okay, okay. So, so when we're working out, let me make sure I don't get caught on this. So when we're working out, this is what we do. Right? We're lifting weights and we're like, oh yeah, this feels good, right? Yeah, sweet. Whew, all right. And then we put more weight on because we can lift more weight, right? And so we say, hey, hey man, can you come spot me? And you say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, so he comes and he spots out, okay, man, this is really heavy, but don't help me. No, don't help me. Get your hand on the bar. Just, 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 just be ready, okay? So I'm, I'm, help me lift it up, though. Help me lift it up. But don't help me, okay? Okay, help me, let's go. Okay, don't help me, let go. Let go, I got it. I got it, okay. And so, we go, and, you're, and you're, you can encourage me if you want to. And so, so okay, he, yeah, we do it. okay, I know. Okay. One more, one more, you can do it. Come on, one, come on, one more, come on. One more, come on, you can do it. No, don't help me, I got it, don't help me, let go. Let go, let go, okay. Uh, okay, help me, help me. No, don't, don't help, no, don't help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. Okay, I did it. I did it. Thanks, Jovan. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up for Jovan, everybody. So, so this is kind of, kind of like, this is kind of what we do 
those people that are like, no, I need your help. No, but don't help me. No, but I need your help. But don't help me. It's like, but help me. Help me. No, but, but don't help me. He's like, well, what do you want me to do? Just drop the bar and walk away. That's what you do. No, don't do that. But, but, but we're like, help, help, help. Everybody wants to be strong. Everybody wants the gym muscles. Everybody wants to be seen as strong. But what if your strength was only ever about the strain? What if your strength was dependent upon how much you struggled? Paul says, so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses. When you're working out by yourself, it's hard to lift the weight up sometimes when you do it, right? It's hard because you're by yourself. You don't have a spotter. You're trying to get it up. It's not like, like you just start cheering for yourself. Like if you do get it up, right? You do get the weight up, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I did it, everybody. Woo! Like you don't start cheering for yourself, right? You don't do it. And this is a good example like CrossFit. This is why CrossFit is so fun. And I know, don't roll your eyes, but it is. It's fun. I haven't done it in a long time. But, but it's fun because you can go, and then and when you're working out, everybody's like, yeah, like, come on, you can do it. And then they're so encouraging you, like, yeah, 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 come on. They're lifting you up. Everybody's cheering you on, but you don't do that for yourself when you're working out by yourself. When you're working out with others, they can help lift up that weight when you feel weak. And you have everyone encouraging you, clapping for you, lifting you up, even though you feel weak. And you're like, I can't do it. I can't get the weight up. They're there. Even though you failed, others can still help you feel good. Right? Even though you failed, others can still help you feel good. Somebody say, I'll be there. Say, I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, the last song, right? I'll be there. How's the rest go? Whenever you call me, I'll be there. So Johan, when he was there, I needed him in that moment to be there because I couldn't get the weight up. Even though I didn't want the help and I was rejecting the help, he still helped me get the weight up because he was there, right? He was there. Yes, you guys hear me? He was there. He was there. So I, 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 he, he was there. We need, what we need to realize is that when we're alone and we feel weak and we feel tired and we feel strained, God's there. He's always there. And they might sound, that might sound super simple, but it's true. And I think sometimes we forget that because we don't physically see Jesus there. We just picture ourselves alone struggling to get that weight up and nobody's around to help lift that weight up. And that's how we feel in our lives when we're going through these struggles, when we're going through these painful things that we, that we walk through. We think we're walking through it by ourselves. And, 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 and it may seem that way on the outside. But this is why it's so important to exercise your spiritual walk with Christ. Because he'll always be there whenever you need him. Always. Always. And this is why we need to embrace the weakness, okay? And this is why we need to be able to learn to boast in our weakness. This is what Paul's talking about. Your training and transformation will go to the next level when you learn to trust and embrace your weakness. Trust and embrace your weakness. Sports coaches and everybody else and stuff like that, they tell you the opposite thing, right? Right? Trainers, they say all these things and all these little phrases about weakness leaving your body and all this stuff like that. And so we get trained to think that weakness is a bad thing. We get trained to think that because I'm struggling, I'm a bad person. Because I'm always falling, I'm a bad person. Because I'm always dropping this weight and I can't lift it up, I'm a bad person. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I can't do it. This is what we tell ourselves in whatever situation you find yourself in. I, 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 I can't do it. I can't do it. But, but, but we are taught to, to hate that. Like, I hate that weakness. I hate it. And Paul's saying, it, saying something completely different. What does boasting mean? Bragging, right? Like celebrating about something. You're, you're, you're proud of something. You're excited about something. 
You're like, you're like, you're like, yeah, man, I, I got that weight up and I looked good, like all that stuff. You ain't hear nobody at the gym, like, man, I felt so hard. Like, oh man, I dropped that weight and that looked so good. <laughs> like, oh man, I was hurting so bad trying to get it up and I dropped it on me and I couldn't get it up and nobody was around. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> That's happened to me, by the way. <laughs> Where I'm like, I dropped the weight one. I didn't drop it on myself because I'm very careful. But but I, I, I thought I could get one more rep in. And I was just like. And I'm looking around. And everybody's all doing their own thing with their headphones in. You know, they're not even paying attention to me. And I'm just, and I had to call, like, Travis, one of the trainers. I'm like, Travis! <laughs> Travis! And he's like, oh. <laughs> and he goes, I, I've done that. But you, but you don't see anybody excited about their failures. And this is what Paul is saying in our scripture. How weird. How strange. Right? I mean, have you ever read this and thought that that was just weird? Because nobody does that. Nobody goes around bragging about their weaknesses. Nobody goes around bragging about their struggles. If anything, we walk around preventing people from knowing our struggles. We want people to see the good things that are happening to us. We want people to see our strength. We want people to see how, how, how much weight we can lift. That's what we want them to see. We don't want them to see the failure. We don't want them to see the struggle. So, so we hide those things. We hide those things and we tuck it away and nobody ever knows. But Paul is saying, no, man, I, I boast in these things. I'm glad. I boast in my infirmities. I boast in them. It's so weird. And today, one of the things I wanted to tell you was your weakness isn't worthless. Your weakness isn't worthless. We need to learn to love our weakness. Somebody say, I love my weakness. Because if it wasn't for your weaknesses, listen, if it wasn't for your weaknesses, then we would never know where we're at. It's like at the gym. You know what you're capable of. You know where you fail. But athletes tend to get mad at when they're failing. Right? They get mad. They're just ah, I'm mad. Oh, I got to get this weight up, man. And, they just, and that's why other CrossFitters who train the wrong way, like, come on, just get that weight up. You're like, yeah. And then they broke their back, and then they're, they're, they're out. But, but, but they, they get so mad, and they just want to get, it, get, get the weight up, and, and, and they get mad at themselves. But at least these guys use their failures to fire them up. Did you hear me? At least these guys use their failures to fire them up. And, and, and they don't stop. I'll give them that. They may be lifting it the wrong way. They may be using the, the, the wrong muscles. They may, be, they may not be using what they're supposed to be using. But at least they get back on it and try again. They drop it. They try it again. Ugh! They kick it. Then they grab it and they try it again. They go cry and then they come back and then they try it again. At least they're using their failures to fire them up. Yes. There's something to be said about that. Your weakness isn't worthless. They see their weakness as a place they need to work on. See, I'm, I'm going somewhere. They see their weakness as a place they need to work on. Their weakness, our weakness, your weakness isn't worthless. More than that, God sees your weakness as worthy. That's my first point. And this isn't going to be a long one, I promise. I'm almost done. Oh, his first point? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to eat afterwards. I'm going to be preaching until the food's ready. Just kidding. But weakness as worthy. God sees your weakness as worthy. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29 says this. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Not many wise, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world. To put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak. Somebody say weak. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. God has chosen the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are so that no flesh should glory in his presence. Ah. So what you see as weakness, God sees as worthy. But we see as weakness, God says, well, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. So many guys in the past 
were, were just weak guys people used. Do you guys remember Gideon? You go, to, go, to, go to the book of Kings, right? First and second Kings. Uh, Kings, that it talks about Gideon, and, and God goes to him, and they were oppressed for seven years. I believe it was seven years uh, for the Midianites because if you go to the beginning of that chapter, it says that, that they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And he, God sent the Midianites to go oppress the people, oppress his people. So they go, and they're, they're, they're struggling, and then they're doing all these awful things to them. But then God says, sends Gideon. Remember how I said, I said rise up? He says, rise up, Gideon. Remember with Philip and Elijah? He says, rise up, Gideon. I'm going to send you. And he says, God, I'm the, I'm the weakest. I'm the weakest in my clan. I'm the, I'm the littlest. I'm the smallest. I'm not strong. I'm, I'm the weakest out of everybody, and we're the weakest, and you want to send us? Like, yeah, absolutely. So he, he, he has this back and forth with God, and he said, well, well prove it to me. <laughs> and all he's saying, God, God shows him all these other things. And then, he, so, so Gideon gets all his men together. He gets all the king's horses and all the king's men. Thank you. And, and my wife laughs, so she knows. And, and so she, they, they, they go, they go out there, and then God says, you have too many. And then Gideon's like, what do you mean I have too many? Like, this is what we need, Lord. Like, <laughs> you want me to go conquer these people? And, and I told you we were weak, but this is what we need. No, it's not what you need. You have too many. So he goes and puts, okay, you guys go away. The Lord said he doesn't want you. Get out of here. So, okay, now we're ready. Let's go. God says you have too many. Really? Seriously? Again? Okay, you guys go over there. God doesn't want you. All right, let's go. God says you still have too many. And then he separates them. At the end of the time, it was only 300 People that God was using to be delivered from Midianites. 300. That was it. 300. So you can imagine 300 people, 300 weak men going up against thousands, thousands of people in this other army of the Midianites. But what does he do? He's victorious. He's victorious. Because like Paul says here, and what God said earlier is that, that I, I, I want to show my strength through your weakness. If, you, if, you, if, if I sent you, Gideon, and with all these soldiers, and you defeated them, then you would start boasting in your own, in your own works. You start boasting in yourself and thinking that you could do these things and not giving glory to me. So I want to make it to where it seems like it is impossible that you, a weak person, that you said you're weak, that, that I could use that. And to show what I could do. And that's what he does. And they go and they defeat all of the people. It was amazing. I mean, we talk about Moses all the time, right? Moses had a, had a stutter. Like, Lord, I'm weak. I, I, I can't even talk. So we'll go anyway. But I can't talk. Go anyway. I can't talk. Go anyway. These are the people that God is calling. God calls more people. God, God, God sends, sends the prophet to go anoint the next king of Israel. Okay. So they didn't have a king. And so, so, so Israel was saying, Lord, we want a king. Lord, we want a king. We're going to make this guy our king. And it wasn't who God chose. It was who they chose. And who did they choose? They chose Saul. And Saul was, it says in the Bible, very, very attractive. He was a very good-looking guy. He kind of looked like Phil. And he was really, really tall. <laughs> and he was really, really tall. He was the tallest out of all these guys back, uh, back then. And he, he was handsome, and he was built, he was strong. So they chose what they saw on the outside rather than what God saw on the inside. And God let him choose Saul. And so what happened with that? I mean, just things were, were happening. Saul wasn't trusting in the Lord. And so God said, okay, I'm going to choose now. I'm going to choose. And so he sends the prophet to go uh, anoint the next king of Israel. And he goes and he sees all the brothers there. Like six brothers, right? Yeah, six brothers. And he goes and says, where, where is he? Is it this one? And then the, the dad's like, yeah, surely it's this one. He's my strong. He's like, no, it's not that one. This one? Nope. That, nope, not that one. Nope, not that one. Did you, is this all the sons you have? And then he's like, he's like no, I have the runt. He's, he's out there singing songs and grazing in the, in the fields. And he's a little weakling. He's like, yeah, that's, take me to him. Like, seriously? Yeah, take me to him. So, so he goes and he finds David, King David. But David is just a little, weak, little boy. And he goes and that's who God wants to choose. So he chooses David. He chooses David. Remember the disciples? Every single one of the disciples that God chose, that Jesus chose, were weak guys. I mean, he chose, he chose guys who were thieves. 
He chose guys that were, that were liars. He chose guys that were, that were cussing out little girls. I mean, that's, that's pretty weak, right? Like, come on. Like, can you imagine me or one of the guys out here, like, cussing out our little girls back here? Seriously, imagine that. Like, do you, like seriously, like, come on, how, how good do you have to make yourself feel in order, like, to feel strong, to, like, belittle a little girl like that? That's Peter. That's who, God, that's who Jesus chose. All these guys, tax collectors, and, and all these guys who were just, who were just weak. All these guys who were uneducated men who were already past the age, some of them, a lot of them, especially Peter, were already past the age to be chosen by a, by a rabbi. So they just decided to just be fishermen. So these guys were just low, weak guys. Jesus chose them. So that's who I want to use. That's who I want to use. God chose in those days, women were seen as weak. Women were seen as inferior in those days. Now, who do you see Jesus going to all the time? He's going to women. And he goes to a woman who, who, who is who's feeling so weak and, and struggling so much that she had, we talked about that before, she's had all of these husbands, right? And then the sixth guy she was living with wasn't even her husband. And she's going in the middle of the day to draw water because she didn't want to be seen by all the other women, women because she felt weak. But Jesus went to her. He went to her. All of these, all these people and, and these guys that God is choosing, he chooses the weak things of this world for a reason because he sees their weakness as worthy. Paul even says in 1 Corinthians 15, 9, he says, I'm the, I'm the weakest of the apostles. And Paul writes majority of the New Testament. And he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 that he's weak. Paul, that a guy falls out of the window when he's preaching till midnight, and Paul stops preaching, goes down there, heals him, and then goes back to preaching again? That's that Paul? He says, I'm the weakest. And he says, I'm the weakest because I was the one that was murdering Christians. Sometimes we can't get past our own past where we feel we're so weak that we can't even allow God to use us in the way he wants to use us. We're so focused on what, what we were, who we were, that we can't be taken to where God wants to take us. Now, because we think we're weak. Somebody say, I'm weak. Remember Samson? The story of Samson? I love the story of Samson. That's what your children are learning right now, Samson and Delilah. But Samson, I mean, this guy was chosen. This guy was, was, was chosen by God, and, and he was given a gift the gift of strength, and it was from the Lord. And long story, super, super, super short. I mean, he's doing all these things. He's so powerful. He kills thousands of men with the jawbone of a donkey. Who does that? <laughs> Samson did. He, he finds a jawbone on the floor and then just, <laughs> just killing men left and right. I mean, he's so strong. But remember how I said it? You can be so strong on the outside, but if you're weak on the inside, and where he was weak on the inside was, was when it came to women. One particular woman was Delilah. That slippery serpent, Delilah. And she goes and she, she just gets in him. He's intoxicated by her. And, and, and she, he'll, he'll, he'll do whatever she wants him to do. And that's exactly what happens. So she's trying to find his weakness so he can be destroyed by the Philistines. She's trying to find his weakness, and eventually he tells, okay, well, my strength is in my hair. My strength is in my hair. That's where it's located because he, he was set apart from God so that you couldn't shave your head. It's called a Nazarite vow. You couldn't shave your head. So, so it had to, his hair was super long. I said, this is, where, this is where my strength comes from, my hair. And that was his first mistake. Because was his strength in his hair? It wasn't, right? He thought it was. But his strength was from the Lord. He forgot that. He forgot that. Sometimes we forget that our strength is from the Lord within us. And we think that we need to have an item or we need to have special things or certain things in order to... Like, if self-help books really helped then that book in the, in, the, in the bookstores would be all empty. Do you hear me? 
Like if self-help books really helped, then, then they would be all gone because everybody would be getting them on the shelves. They'd be empty. So there's all these things that we think we need to derive our strength from. as like, yeah, it's because of this that, that, that I got this strength. I took this C4, and man, I got so strong. Or I took this whey protein, and it got me so I was like, that's not really what it was. It's not really what it was. It was you disciplining yourself for the purpose of godliness. It was you not stopping. It was you continuing and moving forward with the goals that you had set for yourself. But we think it's because of these things that, that, that where we need our strength from. And we forget, like Samson, that it's all because of the Lord. It's all because of the Lord. Everything that we do, every time that you get back up in the morning and you don't want to get up, that's not really you. That's the Lord working through you. That's the Lord helping you. I don't know if you ever realized that or not. That, that's the Lord helping you. And if you don't know the Lord, that's still the Lord helping you because he made you. You're his child. So even if you don't call on his name in the morning, Lord, help me, please get up. Even if you don't do that, and you're just like, oh, I hate this job. And then you just get up anyway. That's the Lord helping you. It is. It really is. Because the Lord, we said last week, doesn't stop chasing after you. So he's going to do everything that he can to say, hey, hey, I'm waking you up. Hey, I'm the one helping you. Hey, I got you that promotion. Hey, I'm still chasing after you. I'm helping you. You may not know me, but I know you. I created you. I'm helping you. He'll do whatever it takes to chase after you to get you to see that it's because of him, not because of you. But Samson thought it was because of his hair, not because of him, the Lord. And so he goes, and it wasn't until the very end where they shave his head, they blind his eyes, he's beaten and tied up on these rocks or these two pillars, and the Philistines are laughing at him and throwing things at him. And, and, and it wasn't until he was found, uh, found weak when God really used him. And he killed the, the most people he's ever killed in his entire life. I mean, he, there's the enemy, the enemy, the enemy of the Lord. And he kills thousands of just, just and he just, you know, you see the Sunday school, he just, and then the whole building just collapses. Because he realized that his strength wasn't in his hair, his strength was God inside of him working in him, and, he, and, and he, couldn't, he couldn't utilize that strength until he first learned to love his weakness. Embrace his weakness. Embrace his weakness. Somebody say embrace. He embraced his weakness, and he saw his weakness as worthy because God said he was worthy. God wants to use those who are aware of their weaknesses so he could show himself strong through you. So that you have no choice but to boast in the Lord and in the Lord alone. He did it. He did it. Somebody say, he did it. He did it. Remember the bench press? Remember how we were just bench pressing and, you know, can I show you guys one thing? Is that okay real quick? Can I show you another thing? Yes? No? I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. So I'm going to show you this. Ow. Okay. So, I could do this. Okay? It's called a push jerk, right? It's heavy, but it's a little easy, right? I might be able to strict press it pretty heavy. Well, let's see. <clears throat> strict press. Cool, I did it. Sweet. Cool, heavy. Do you think I can curl this? You know what a curl is? I lift this up. Whew. That's a curl. Oh, yeah. All right, that's a curl. Do you think I can do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to try this, okay? So I'm going to attempt to curl this. Let me move this out of the way. Just make sure that we don't hurt nobody and my iPad stays safe in my Bible, okay? Okay. This is what Paul says, okay? Let's read this one more time just to get you in that frame of mind. My power works best in weakness. Remember that. My power works best in my weakness. Do you remember that? My power works best in my weakness, okay? So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to close. Okay. 
I've never tried it this heavy before. <laughs> I'm really trying hard, guys, just so you know. Um, this isn't it. It's not faking it. <sighs> One more time. <sighs> okay. So, when you guys can't lift that weight up, okay, when you're straining, the struggles that you're going through in your life, when you're falling seven, eight, ten times over and over and over again, but you keep getting back up and you can't seem to lift that weight up, I don't know how I'm still holding on to this weight, but I am. Sometimes you need somebody to help you. Javon, come back at me. Okay, I'm going to curl this. Now I really need you to help me. Help me lift the bar up. So I'm gonna, we're gonna lift up. Okay, okay, okay. We need, we need some more help. We need some more help. Phil, Phil, come here. Come here, Phil. Hurry, hurry, come here. Get on the side. I don't know how much I can hold this up. Come on. Are you ready? You guys are gonna help me lift this. Come on. Help me lift this. Get, help me lift this. Oh. Okay, now I can do it. Now I can do it. See, but sometimes, sometimes go ahead and keep holding it just so I'm not straining with it. So, <laughs> so, so sometimes, though, see, and this is what I wanted to get to you guys. This, we forget that it's because of God's strength, okay? So it's not enough to just get the weight up by myself. It's not enough to just have one person on the side or the other person on the side, okay? We need, we need another person on the side. Fred, Fred you want to come help me real quick? Want to come help me? Come back at me. Spot me in the back, okay? See, what we need to realize is, Okay, help me lift it up. It's the Father, down. It's the Son, and it's the Holy Spirit. See? So now I can get the strength up because my power works best in my weakness. When I can't get the weight up, see, and I can do more now because I have God with me. I have Jesus with me. I have the Holy Spirit with me. Come on, somebody. You have God in you giving you that strength. Okay, you can drop it. Woo, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's what I'm talking about. You don't need, you don't need just one person. You don't need the, another person. You need, you need God. That's what God is for you. When you can't lift that up, and my, my arms are on fire right now. So my arms are on fire. So when you can't get that up, you need God. The Trinity, that's who God is for you. That's what this verse means, that, that, that my pow the power of Christ can work through me. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's what, that's, what, that's what that means. This is what Paul's talking about. This is why he's excited about his weaknesses. This is why he says, I'm glad that I'm hurting. I'm glad that I'm in pain because it's not me that's getting up in the morning. It's not me that's going forward. It's God working through me. It's God's power working through me. It's because of his strength. I can't do this alone. It's because of God. It's only because of God. And from this, your training for transformation rises to the next level. You become stronger because you know your weaknesses are what push you to grow. Come on, somebody. The enemy wants you to think about your weaknesses and make you feel worthless. That's what the enemy wants you to do. But he wants you to make you feel useless. But the enemy is a liar. What does it say in John 8, 44? The enemy is a liar. He speaks out of his own character, for he was a liar from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's trying to murder you and kill you into thinking that you're so weak that you're useless. That's what he's trying to do. But God says, you know what? The devil, the devil might think that he's winning. He, he may get a couple of stabs in, in there. He's still using that weapon. That weapon is still formed against you, and it may cut you every now and again, but it will not prosper. It will not overcome. It will not deliver. Come on, somebody. The enemy is alive. So what you got to do is flip it up. Somebody say flip it up. Somebody say flip it up. It's like when somebody's making fun of you, right, when you were at school back in the day. And they're just, they're just bullying you, and they're saying all these bad things about you. I need a towel. Where's my Baptist towel? And, and, and you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Like in the schoolyard, they're just telling you all these things. Like, you're, like what they just tell me, I used to have a lot of hair. So they used to call me Bush. That, that's what they did. They used to call me, they did, and, they, and I was so little. They used to call me mean names and all these things like that. And so, but, but eventually, I was taught, and my mom taught me, you got to burn hot coals on their head. 
Okay? If they know that they're, they're, that they're getting to you, if they, if they know that, that you're letting them get to you, then they're winning. So what do you got to do? You got to flip it up. So they say, hey, Rich, hey, man, yeah, you're short. And I, I could be like, yeah, dang, I am short. I suck. Or I'd be like, yeah, I am short, man, but I'm better at basketball than you. Yeah. <laughs> right? 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 Yeah, you're right, I'm short, but can you sing? Right, right. It's like these little, these little things. I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying to, to, to tear other people down. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you got to flip it up. You got to flip it up and use your weaknesses against the enemy, because the enemy wants to use your weaknesses against you to make you feel worthless. When God says, "I'm choosing you specifically for a reason because of your weakness," so He can use a short little Mexican up here to preach to you guys and train you guys and show you that God can work through you. Somebody say, "I'm weak." Be happy about your weakness. Be happy. Be happy. Remember I said how Daniel's just sore all the time? He's sore because he's working so hard and he's getting so much clientele in and that's God working through him. Even though he's sore, God has given him all this business. God has given him all this clientele. That's God working through him. He may still feel weak, but he knows where to turn to. He knows who to turn to. That's what I'm talking about. When you expose yourself, what does the enemy have on you? Nothing. Nothing. Remember how I said that earlier? Remember I said earlier, we, we want to we wanna shy away. We want to hide it away. We, wanna, we, we want anybody to see what we're going through. We don't want anybody to see our struggles. And, 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 and what I'm saying is show your weakness. Be happy about your weakness. It's okay. Because when you start sharing your weaknesses, that's when God can really work. When you start revealing your weaknesses, that's when you start seeing miracles work through you. Don't withdraw because of your weaknesses. Walk it out. Come on, someone, you remember that song? Now walk it out, now walk it out, now walk it out. Come on, come on, son. Where's Janice? I need Janice. You got to walk that out. Don't withdraw from your weakness. Walk it out. Somebody say walk it out. Woo, this is good. It's my last point, and I'm done. I, I, literally, I'm done right now. Two minutes. Walk out your weakness, Paul says. This is why I take pleasure in my weaknesses. I'm going to ask the band to come up, and we're going to take communion here in a second. Come on, band. Jesus came to be born from a weak town, okay? He was born from a weak this, and, 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 and they, they even told him. They said, what good can come from Nazareth? And then the Pharisees even said, they said, said he's saying, because Jesus, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus is telling them who their father is, and he's basically saying your father is the devil. And the Pharisees, says, we weren't, the Pharisees say, we weren't born of fornication. In other words, like, you don't know who your daddy is, Jesus. That's what they're telling him. Jesus was, that was a, a, a weakness. That was seen as a weakness. But did you see Jesus withdraw? Did you, do you see, do you read about him withdrawing or hiding away and running away from the Pharisees when they told him things like that? Those awful things? Did you? I, didn't, I don't see that anywhere. If anything, Jesus pushed himself forward that much more. And he didn't withdraw. He walked it out. He said, yeah, yeah, I was. I, I, did, I did. I, I did come from. Yeah, Joseph. Joseph isn't my, my real dad, but yet Joseph is my dad. And he, he walked it out. He walked it out. And he didn't let anybody tell him otherwise. Jesus didn't fall back because of the insults and persecutions. No. Instead, Jesus used them to show God's power through them. He used them. He used them. Because they're like, you know, Mary doesn't even know who the dad is. Like, I know who the dad is, the Holy Spirit. What? You're a weirdo. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> it's the truth. Well, your mother was sleeping. No, she wasn't. I mean, he, 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 he didn't withdraw. He didn't withdraw. Every time Jesus performed a miracle, somebody was saying, who is this that the wind and waves obey him? Who is this that even demons tremble before him? Who is this that even the, 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 the blind eyes are open, the deaf can hear, the mute can speak? Who is this? They didn't even know. Because Jesus didn't withdraw from his weaknesses as a man. 
Do you remember the Garden of Gethsemane? Because we know God was fully human and fully God. I'm sorry, Jesus was fully human and fully God. It's called the duality of Christ, okay? He had dual personalities, meaning he was 100% human and 100% God. So if he was 100% human, you better believe that Jesus cried. The shortest verse in the Bible, Lazarus dies, Jesus wept. Garden of Gethsemane, he was nervous. He was maybe a little scared. He was, he, was, he was freaking out because he knew he was about to be murdered. He was sweating blood. That was his humanity state. You can't deny that, right? That was a weakness. But his, whew, him, him being fully God, that's what allowed him to get back up and say, even though I'm scared, even though I know what I'm about to face, even though my struggle is so much right now, I know that I can still get back up because the Father's with me. That's strength made perfect in weakness. That's, what's Paul, that's what Paul's talking about. That's why he says, I'd rather boast in my infirmities, in my persecutions, in my trials and temptations, because where I am weak, then I am strong. Then I am strong. Somebody say, I'm weak. Somebody say, I'm weak. I am weak. But the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Somebody say, I'm weak. I, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody say, I'm weak. I'm weak. Because it's not my might or my power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. Somebody say, I'm weak. I'm weak. So your weakness actually equals strength. Yes. Your weakness actually equals strength strength. Why? Because of Christ's strength through you. It's interesting that this is the week, this is week five of our series of training day. And you know what five represents in the Bible? The number five represents in the Bible. You know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? I'm going to tell you. Number five means grace. What a way to, 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 to land on this week, on this message. And, and honestly, I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't find that out till this morning. I was like, hey, it's week five. Five means grace. Five means, five means grace. And what's the first thing that we read in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9? What is the first thing he said? Three times I asked the Lord to remove this from me. But it says what? But God says, my, my grace is what? Is enough. My grace is sufficient. My grace is enough. So what I think God wanted me to tell you guys today, whatever weakness you're going through, whatever struggle you're going through, his grace is enough. Ooh, come on, somebody. Give God glory and praise right now. Give a five-second praise break. Come on, five-second praise break. Five-second praise break for God. Come on. My grace is enough. And then Paul says, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses, in the insults, in the hardships, in the persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Your weakness isn't worthless. You're actually worthy. And if you're worthy, then your weakness actually makes you a winner because of God. And this is the reason why Christ came to die for our sins, to show you that he conquered death. He conquered whatever sin struggle you're dealing with right now. He conquered whatever, whatever situation you find yourself in right now. He conquered that. He destroyed that. And everybody, the, 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 the Romans, the God, everybody, Pontius Pilate, all these guys saw this weak man who died on the cross. They even, they even insulted him when he was on the cross. And they said, if you're so great, if you are God, bring yourself down from this place. And what does Jesus say? He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So what they saw as weakness Really, what they were witnessing was God's strength. And that's what God did for us.